Shiver me timbers. I'm glad it's spring. It definitely wasn't the last time I made a video, and the weather wheel of fortune has spun repeatedly since then. It started fairly flipping crisp, I can tell you that. My bangers were frosted hard. Take that how you will. I had made this bulkhead door from some ply and a reclaimed panel from an old piano. And when I say bulkhead, I'm talking the divide between the cab and living space in my camper van. But the theme is ship's bulkhead, at least where the door is concerned. Trouble was, last time I had left it flapping in the wind. No lock, no handle, no clasp, nothing. I lusted secretly after one of those mechanisms from a watertight bulkhead door and I had notions I could make one using my extreme plasma table. Here's how those notions panned out. made numerous attempts cutting parts in mild steel on the extreme machine, some because of mods to the design, some because I'm still learning about CNC plasma cutting, and when I thought I had everything dialed in, I moved to a nice clean sheet of stainless. You know how expensive materials are these days, right? I mean, it almost takes the fun out of things. Luckily, my buddy Stephen at Delvo Engineering had a couple of tasty beverage glasses he needed filled and traded me this steel for something stout. You know what I'm talking about. Here's the snack. The stainless doesn't act like mild steel. When the sheet got warm enough, it warped and kicked up in a shallow bow. The machine torch caught it and started to drag it. Now the cool thing with the CNC machine is that you can rewind and start from a specific point in a job. The tricky bit though is realigning the workpiece and whereas it'll look like I got it fairly spot on, it was only close and I ended up recutting the two big rims all together.
On the off chance it'll help you save a few fun time tokens, this was the most reasonably priced needle scaler I could find. Which means it was the cheapest. Which is good, because I'd be surprised if I ever use it as intended again. A needle scaler is a very job specific thing, I found out that the hard way. If your car has the type of rust that a needle scaler is good for, or more to the point, if you're not just looking to knock big flakes of rust off something, I'd seek other tools. Anyway, I was staring at it one day thinking what an air hungry, noisy waste of space it was when it dawned on me it looked like it was just a gun with a scaler attachment and the fitting underneath was probably a standard thread. A quick browse of the Chinese digital department store and a general air chisel spring clip arrived for less than the price of a beverage. I got some rivet hammers and a couple of bags of old school rivets and the hunch paid off. And speaking of the price of a beverage, if you start to see more of my videos coming at you and you're enjoying them, have a look on my website for ways to support, buy Restoware, or become a patron of the channel. I need you. Yes, I still have the Esprit. I'm more grateful for that now than ever. You know, I didn't make a splash about it, but I became a dad a little over a year ago, and that's why things have been so thin around here. Well, except me. I ate a lot of comfort pies. But in the spirit of Lotus, I've been adding lightness lately, and the Esprit dream is my me time priority. I just want to drive this car now, so as promised, and as a return to channel ethos, I will from this point on expend all available energy and time on the Lotus until it's done. Not only that, but I'm going to put it back together as quickly as I can. Now that the chassis is right, there's nothing else that won't be easily reworked, I mean, if needs be, as a rolling restoration. But that's not why I'm here at Delta Auto Body today. I owe the lads hugs and a little stink eye for writing on my chassis. Oh yeah and my drill press is here.
Well, it was that about that time I realised I'd gotten it wrong. Forethought definitely isn't at an all-time high what with a little terrorist applying sleep deprivation tactics on me. If we look at the upper two bars as an example, if the right-hand bar isn't pivoting from 12 o'clock or earlier, it will rise as the left-hand bar, pivoting from about 10 o'clock, is falling. I've built a radial engine crankshaft. A couple of attempts later, and a few wasted hours spent drawing compass points that turned out to be too small for the machine to cut, I got the crank plate right. You, you got that, didn't you? All the little points on the wheel were supposed to be echoes of a compass. I just couldn't make them pointy or there'd be bloody knuckles every time you opened the door. obsess I know but patience equals good things is what I'm chalking it up to it's finally time to move down the van and build an interior and we're going for space here I have a plan to maximize floor space and provide a little stowage at the same time minutes. 
So the idea is a pair of side pockets for books, a laptop, a drink bottle, the usual stuff. These pockets, remember, are alongside where a pair of bus-style passenger seats will sit, so they'll be handy for stuffing a coat into or a bag of treats. Orange sherbet. Licorice torpedoes. Bum gums. Those side bins aren't very deep. Yeah, I hear you. But on a trip around the time of the last video, I finally found something I'd had my eye out for for quite a while. The only thing is, when I did get to offer it up to the side bins, I knew it just wouldn't work. And I thought to myself, hold my beer. It was the thought of a man seemingly incapable of learning this lesson.
Why, Mr. Fishing Net? Why? I'm now into tying 11 knots, and who's got time for that? 10 years ago, me, maybe. At least I'm mostly down one side of the camper. The glass can't go in on this side until the temperatures rise and I can repair and spray a few rust breakouts on the outside where I made prep mistakes before painting. You might have eyeballed some of those at the start of the video. I have some very cool special purpose hinges for a fold out bed on the other side of the van. That'll come next time you see the camper, but for now, that's it. And expect major esprit movement from here on in. This last year has put a real damper on video production for me. I've been able to hang in there by the grace of my patrons. So if you enjoy these videos and want to safeguard my time to make them, my website is linked below and you'll find loads of ways to give something to get something. Thanks to my newest patrons, Bren Darrow, Eamon Ahmed, Andy Thompson, James Aland, Mr. Shadow De, Killian Burke, Gregory Felmley, Dave Meehan, Stephen Murphy, and returning patrons, Tom Trammell, Puya Imami, Alexander McDonnell, and Cesar E. I can't do it without you, so thanks from the bottom of my work pants. If you've signed up for stickers and they never arrived, give me a shout. I'm chasing all outstanding ones down, but a nudge never hurt. That's it. I'm off to prep for life on the Lotus. Until next time, stay stuck in and good luck.